Hey there, a few years ago at this point uh, we did a quick video on how to calculate the probability of a stock touching a given value, be it above or below. Uh, the current stock price, assuming kind of a geometric Brownian motion type of model. And we did this via a Monte Carlo uh, simulation and a user, a viewer, uh, asked recently if I could do the same thing in Excel. And we can do that at least, uh, it's easy in principle, I find Excel very clunky to do such a thing. If you wanted to do, use Excel, I think it would be better to use uh, something like VBA to do the coding part of it, but it can be done in Excel by itself. So we're going to do that. Uh, before we jump into that, I want to go back to the original, or better said, in the original, um, a user, another viewer, found a, an error in the original calculation. It didn't affect the numerical uh, values, but essentially what was happening was I was doubly scale, rescaling the volatility from uh, years down into days, but uh, because our time step was equal to one, we were basically just multiplying uh, the number by one, so it didn't affect the, uh, the the numerical output of the calculation, but technically it was wrong. And um, looking through the code again, I found I did the same thing with the uh, risk-free rate, scaling of the risk-free rate. So I just want to stop, uh, before I start with the Excel, just kind of explain uh, what's going on there and how to fix it. Again, it doesn't affect the numerical output, but it is technically incorrect. So let's do that first. So here's the model we've been following. Basically, it's a Brownian motion in, the, in terms of the percentage uh, change in the stock price. So we're approximating, approximating the differential equation with this kind of finite difference type approach. So here, um, S is the stock price, so stock price at the ith day and the ith plus one day. Uh, R is the risk-free rate, and that's measured in, uh, that's an annualized uh, rate of returns. Uh, delta T is the time step, again, that's also in years. And then we have sigma, which is the implied volatility or the volatility, depending on, um, on how you want to define things. Again, annualized, again, delta T, square root of delta T. And this epsilon sub I is just a number sampled from the normal distribution. So it's, it's you know, a standard normal Gaussian distribution, mean zero, standard deviation of one. So notice that all of these numbers here are in years. Or maybe it's better to say they're expressed in terms of year. So it's the volatility annualized, uh, risk-free rate annualized. So the issue in the original video was I scaled the risk-free rate down to a daily uh, daily return. So because I want to take time steps of one day, I just, um, just divided through by 252, which is what I'm using as the number of trading days in the year. And I, was, I did that because mainly uh, I was just lazy and didn't want to uh, take into account compounding effects. And with interest rates this low, it's not going to make that much of a difference. Um, likewise, I also scaled the volatility down to uh, a daily basis by dividing the annualized volatility by 1 over the square root of 252. And then I replaced uh, delta T, which is the time step expressed in years, and then I expressed it in terms of days. So it's just one day. So uh, what I did was technically correct, uh, but I think it was a bit confusing because these, time, uh, these, these quantities are normally expressed in terms of years, as I had said before. So in this video, what I'm going to do is take the time step delta T to be a day, but I'm going to express it in terms of years. And again, I'm using trading days, so 252. So delta T will be 1 divided by 252. Cool. So let us uh, get on to Excel and coding this up. Okay, I think for the sake of debugging, uh, I'm going to put the parameters in one sheet and then make a bunch of others for uh, subsequent calculations. So I'll put, do one for the normal, um, for uh, sampling from the normal distribution, one for like the percentage change of the stock price, another for the stock price itself, and then I'll probably put on um, this page here the actual uh, result of the calculation. So let's do our sigma, which is going to be our implied volatility our time step DT. Um, we're going to need the risk-free rate and we're going to need the original stock price which I'm going to call S0 and I'm going to set that stock price to be 110. Uh, the risk-free rate I'm going to set to 1% and this is going to be again annualized. DT is going to be one day so it's going to be 1 divided by 252 number of trading days per year so this time step is technically in years. And again, our implied volatility is also annualized, and I'm going to choose a 30% implied volatility. Okay, so I'm going to call this sheet here uh, parameters. I'm going to create a, another sheet um, for our normal sampling. So I'm just going to call this normal. 
and I might as well make these others since I'm down here our percent change of the stock price um, let's call that uh, PCT for percent and lastly the actual stock price I'm just, just going to call it stock S T O C K okay and let me save this before something happens so let's go back to parameters and let me save it so let's start building our normal uh, sampling uh, sheet here so uh, the way I'm going to organize this is our each individual simulation is going to be a row here so each column is going to be a separate uh, day and since we're not going to need the first day, the, the A will co correspond to the zeroth day. So B will be the first day, which we actually need a sample uh, from. So unfortunately, Excel, as far as I know, does not have the ability to sample from the normal distribution. But it has an inverse function, norm INV, which kind of calculates the inverse of the normal cumulative distribution function. And we've talked about this before. Um, in a subsequent video, I'll do this, this same problem again in, in a notebook, as I, as I talked about, and then I'll mention how this, this works here. So we're going to take the inverse of the normal cumulative, and we're going to take a num random number, R, A, and D, from 0 to 1, and our mean is 0, and our standard deviation is 1. So let's see if that works. It seems to. So now let's just basically take these out for 30 days. And if I can uh, work out the alphabet correctly, that should correspond to a D right here. So there we go. And let's just take this down. Let's only do um, how many simulations do we want? Let's just do 300 for now, which would be good enough to, uh, to, to see if this actually works. Okay, so uh, there we are. Um, let's move on now to calculate the uh, percent change in the stock price. So we'll come up here. Actually, let's put something in the A column here. So that's our initial stock price. So this was, oh, this is the percent change. We don't need the initial stock price for now. So if you remember that formula, it is equal to the risk-free rate times the uh, time step. So that would be our parameter sheet. And it is, uh, risk-free rate was in cell B3, if I remember times the risk-free rate, which was in parameters, parameters, uh, cell B2. Uh, does that run? Uh, there's an issue. Okay, so I fixed that. I forgot to put the equal sign when I'm calculating the uh, time step DT. I just put 1 over 252 instead of equals 1 over, 1 over 252. So now we need to add in our volatility term. So that's going to be sigma. That's parameters um, B1 times our square root of our time step. So it's SQRT. Our time step is parameters B2. Okay, and that should do it. Wait a minute, I need a... Uh, exclamation point here now that should do it so does that run seems to so let's take this out to again a D this is why um, Excel is not really the best tool for this a D and we'll go down 300 here good so now let's do our stock price so we have the percent change our a column is going to be our initial stock price so this is just going to be equal to uh, parameters uh, and that was in the cell B4 if I spell it right it works a lot better so 110 uh, let me pull this down 300 here Okay, so uh, we can just calculate uh, the next day's price from the previous day. So that's equal to uh, A1 plus the percent change. So that's going to be um, PCT. Uh, the cell is what? The cell is B1. And that, again, is going to be multiplied times A1 here. And that looks good. There we go. So let's just uh, fill this in here. Uh, 
and um, let's just drag that down 300. All of these rows look the same. What's going on here? Did oh, you know what I probably did is I have uh, those dollar signs that kind of um, oh, it's not that. You know what it is? I forgot to multiply. I'm on this uh, PCT one. I forgot to not multiply it by the normal um, a random number here. So this has to be multiplied by normal and uh, a two. And now let's just run uh, these out. Okay, so this percent change is updated. Our stock prices, uh, that change is propagated through to all of our stock prices. Let's just uh, plot one of these out to make sure that uh, this kind of looks like a reasonable uh, simulation. So I'm just going to plot one row. Uh, go to insert. Let's just do that. Yeah, that kind of looks reasonable. Okay, so now we're ready to do the Monte Carlo uh, calculation. So we have all of these random stock simulations. So we have 300 of these types of, of, of you know, stock motion. And uh, we're going to have to use a couple instances of Excel's count if uh, a statement to actually do the calculation. So uh, for every row here, for example, this first row, we're going to use the count if to see how many of these values um, are above or below, depending on where our, uh, our target price is, um, how many times that, how many entries are above or below our target price here. And then uh, if that number, you know, is greater than one, uh, we're just going to count that as a single hit. And we're going to count the number of times our, our we're going to count the number of simulations where that price target was hit. So let's do that now. And, um, uh, I'm just going to set a target price of 120. So for the first row, it's going to be count if um, a1 to ad1 and our Boolean statement is greater than 120. Let's see if that runs. No, of course it doesn't. So what is wrong here? Count if A1 to AD1. Oh, I need to, I have a typo here. And I close off this uh, quotation here. So apparently zero values meet that uh, criteria. So let's pull this down and see what we get. Uh, so we do get a bunch of these where that is the case. So our target has been hit. So now we just basically need to sum up all of these uh, ones that are not equal to zero. So we have one hit here that would count as one. We have 11 hit hits here that would count as one also. And then of course the zeros would count as zero. So again, we'll use the count if statement for that. Let's uh, go back to the top. We will go equals count if. And that is going to be, what's this column name, AF. And our Boolean is greater than zero. Let's close it out. Does that run? That should be a zero name. It should be AF1. That works. So let's just pull this one down. So let's just stop here. So you see it's counting all of these where there, any value greater than zero is counted as one. So let's uh, just extend this down to the end here. Okay, done. And our final probability will be just the sum of this column. Uh, divided by the total number of runs. So we did 300 runs. So let's just figure out our sum here. So let's just say this is equal to sum. This column here is AG1 to AG300. So we hit it 99 times. And our probability, I'll put in this field, is equal to this cell here, AH1, divided by 300. So our probability is about 27%. 
So every time the sheet updates, this will adjust slightly. Let's see if I can force an update. It doesn't seem to want to do it. There we go. So this time we get 30%. Let me do it one more time. 31%. Last time, 28%. And I'm just using 300 samples just uh, for convenience. Obviously, this number would be more stable if we had more and more uh, samples. I'm just not going to kind of do that in Excel because it's already kind of a, a boring process. So the probability of a touch of 120 for those stock parameters is about 30-ish percent. Cool. Okay, so uh, at least easy in principle, a bit clunky in execution. But again, Excel I don't think is the proper tool for this sort of thing. So I will upload this spreadsheet to GitHub, and also the original probability of a touch code uh, was in just a, a regular Python text file. I'm going to redo uh, that as a uh, Jupyter Notebook along with text to explain the, um, the issue with the scaling of the units, and I will also put that up at some date in the not too distant future. Probably not right now, but um, coming, coming soon. So until next time, see you later.